The O'Reilly Factor, the number one cable news show for 13 years running. Thanks, Stan Wittes and Bill O'Reilly. In the weekdays at Bernie segment tonight, the death of Margaret Thatcher has prompted much discussion about her policies and overall demeanor. If you were around in the 1980s, you know Lady Thatcher got hammered by both the British and American press. Joining us now from Miami to put it into perspective, the purveyor of BernardGoldberg.com, Mr. Goldberg. I want to read one thing to the audience from the Boston Globe, you know, obviously a left-wing newspaper, worse back then than it is now. This is what they said about uh, Margaret Thatcher, quote, she's an instructive example to Americans of what happens when the mechanics of parliamentary democracy unite a right-wing <coughs> extremist with an automatic majority of constitutionally docile legislatures. Margaret Thatcher is a political freak, unquote. You know, very vitriolic. New York Times, uh, Washington Post, didn't like her one bit. Has anything changed? Right. Well, no, th there's a rule of thumb that exists through the decades. And that is, if a conservative politician like Ms. Thatcher or Ronald Reagan try to shake things up as they did in the 1980s, they're often seen in the media as cold-hearted or mean-spirited or something like that. But when a liberal politician, like Barack Obama, for instance, tries to shake things up by, by turning around the uh, health care system in this country, they're often seen by the media as progressive. Now, what you read in the uh, Boston Globe is not all that different from uh, a lot of other stuff the media was reporting back then. I went through a ton of articles today uh, for this segment, and let me just give you three very quick examples. In 1981, the New York Times said, in Britain, under Margaret Thatcher, class warfare is endemic. Okay, fair enough. But Barack Obama has been waging class warfare ever since he took office, and the same New York Times doesn't seem all that concerned about about that when it involves somebody that they support. The NBC News said Thatcher has ruthlessly applied her conservative solutions. Again, fair enough, but NBC News didn't describe Barack Obama's tactics as ruthless when he virtually bribed Democratic politicians uh, to support uh, Obamacare. And the final example, uh, the Washington Post said Margaret Thatcher divided Britain uh, between haves and have-nots, winners and losers. That's also arguably true. But Barack Obama, according to very respectable polls, is the most polarizing president, or one of them anyway, in recent American history. So if it happens to a conservative, they do something that the media doesn't like, the liberals in the media will jump all over them. But when a liberal does the exact same thing, they look the other way for the most part. Isn't it interesting that nothing's changed in 33 years? It is nothing has changed. It's the same mantra today, 2013. Liberal socialistic policies are best. Uh, if you oppose them, you're a fascist, a rich guy who hates the poor. This is the key stat for Margaret Thatcher for everybody to understand. I read this to Britt Hume. When Thatcher took office, and, and, Ron, and Ronald Reagan and Thatcher came in about the same time, all right, there was a worldwide recession and tremendous inflation. Jimmy Carter was a disaster as a president. The economics were crazy. Uh, gas lines. Anybody old enough to remember that horror knows what a mess it was. All right. Things peaked for the worse in 1982, two years after Thatcher and Reagan were in power. In Britain, 13% unemployment, which this is, that's a catastrophe, 13%, all right? When she leaves office eight years later, 5.8% unemployment. So, I mean, is it about performance or what? It's just insane. Now, if Barack Obama in the next three years were to turn the economy around and unemployment's at four and a half percent and, and wages are going up and everybody's, you know, and I'll, I'll give him credit. But this is insane here to call, Listen, continue Bill. to call this woman a fascist, rich, this, that, and the other thing when the performance is right on the paper. Look, I can go through a long song and dance about trying to explain it, but it's really simple. 
liberals in the media don't like conservatives. They don't, and they don't care about the folks. They masquerade about caring for them. But if, if the unemployment rate drops <laughs> 7%, right. which means all those millions of people are working under this woman, give her some credit. Right. Hey, can I share with your viewers something that I'm sure they wouldn't know about because it's happening in Britain right now? If we think the left in this country can be a little nuts, get this. This is all happening in the last few hours. They're planning a street party in London to celebrate Margaret Thatcher's death. The National Union of Students, which is holding a convention today, when they heard the news that Thatcher died, they cheered. A coal miners union said that this is a great day for coal miners. And I'll give you one more. There's a Facebook campaign going on right now in Great Britain to make the song Ding Dong, The Witch is Dead, the number one song on whatever, iTunes or whatever else. This is how much the left in Britain hated Margaret Thatcher. And as I say, liberals didn't, don't like conservatives who shake, thing, think, who shake things up and people in the media don't like conservatives who do that. But when liberals shake things up, they're seen as saints. Yep. And that's how they see Barack Obama. And that's how they saw, in the opposite way, they saw Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan. All right, Bernie, thank you. Corolla on deck. He's furious about how the airlines are treating passengers. Also, the A-man has some thoughts about gay marriage. Uh-oh. Corolla, moments away.